Is it? Hello, everybody. Are you seeing us? Is what's there? Have any... Oh, we're we're shoot. We are streaming, Bonnie. We're streaming. Okay, cool. Okay. Not okay. with the shotguns here, so. Okay. All right, people are seeing us, y'all. I'm still. This is a work in progress. Obviously, I'm... Bonnie's f face is a work in progress. I'm eating just pure bread. Yeah, this is in theme of the book. I mean. Oh yeah. I do, I do this anyway for Zoom calls, which probably explains why I have not been hired at a company yet with all the Zoom job interviews I've been doing. Talk to, talk to me about your job hunt. So Bonnie's been on the hunt for a job since oh, her God. last. Okay. So I I'm going to eat bread. I'm doing some free. Okay. Welcome to my TED talk on being a woman in entertainment woman. Let's just leave it at that. Mm. And um, got a mm -hmm. new camera. I'm sorry for the lag. I uh, have spectrum. I don't know if that matters in the internet world. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, have a new, I have a new camera for our other book club ages ago, and I have a, I don't have a mic, so just this is just me. But okay. I'm also in a weird mood because I got rejected. Oh my god! So I won't. The company that did not hire me today, even though I should, because they are historically not so great in hiring women in general. But I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. That could be an, <laughs> but, uh, the company in question, the company in question has many lost yes. street women. Which so. again, does you know. <laughs> well, anyway, and I have friends that work there. He said, you'd be perfect for this job. So it was, mm -hmm. for a, it was, uh, games editor. And I have a lot of experience in both editing and narrative games, writing and mm -hmm. writing in general. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. initially, the recruiter said, oh, they have editing uh, experience. I'm like, really? Okay. Because I dumbed down my because I'm so old, I could probably do their the CEO's job. So I always dumb it down. <laughs> so it's like, oh, no, I'm a perfect fit because it happened. They said that I didn't have enough experience. So uh, the third-party recruiter I was working with, I wasn't even working directly with the game company's recruiter. He's like, and he's very nice. He was like, um, can you maybe, you know, show her something that has more, shows more of experience as, as you as an editor. Cause they don't think you're, you're right for the senior position. And I like giggled. I'm like, okay. And so I said, oh, I have 20 years experience. 10 of those were with Lucasfilm. I should have just said, I have 10 years experience at Lucasfilm. I got back to him and said, oh yeah, she's too overqualified, it, which means you're too old. You can't legally say, I'm not going to hire an old Betty like me uh, because I could sue them. So it's more like, you know, you're too experienced. You'll be, I'm okay with being bored and being paid for it. Because what do you mean I'm going to be bored? Only boring people get bored. I'll be fine. I'll bring a puppet with me to work. I'll be fine. In me, And I was kind of thinking this was going to be the one. It's like issue of the bachelor ever. <laughs> I'm like pushed, pushed away. Um, yeah, it sucks. It sucks. So, and also I threw out my back last night. Uh, don't know why just being, just sitting there and I threw it out. So I, and this job would have been remote. It's not like I had to run around the halls with a bad back or anything. Like I just, I don't know. It sucked. Cause it really hurt my feelings. Cause I was like, my writer's group was like, Oh, you're going to, so qualified you have all this experience. i'm sorry i'm sorry bonnie first of all i'm covered in filth yes i'm wearing a uh shirt. wga shirt i went and and protested today or struck i was doing striking at paramount pictures a lot of people there it was oh, good by the way, can i add real quick i put out yeah. a tweet little message that i'm looking for work as a writer do you know yeah. how many people who don't know me contact me via wga scab and i'm like first of all I would never do that okay. to my friends. Uh, solidarity with all my writer friends that work in TV and film directly. Well, every writing job is not covered not, by the WGA. I'm also not in the WGA. Well, you're not. Well, you are, aren't you? Scripts? Are you just actors? Uh, I no no no. I'm in I'm in the WGA. You're I the have written many pilots that never went anywhere, and I wrote on at Mystery Science Theater, which is a WGA. Yeah, exactly, an award-winning show. So mm -hmm. I I kept saying stand in solidarity with my writer comrades that work in TV and film. 
thing. I've been spending 25 years trying to get into the WGA and it's like the Illuminati. I can't get in. I have applied many times. I thought I did a good job. TV show that never got on air. Would no, sometimes it's weird. But also, Bonnie, the minute you have to join, you're spending a couple thousand dollars to be a member. Oh, yeah, the and I, I don't work that. I don't work as oh, a WGA writer. Like two thousand five hundred bucks right off the bat. Yeah, here. but they're being what? but they're being really supportive of their uh, members, and they're getting the strike done, and everyone's afterwards. So I think it's you'll get it. there. It's worth it. Oh if yeah, you actually have a job that pays that. But I don't. I'm on unemployment. Yeah. I'm not, <laughs> unless a writer still wants unless to. Unless you need that. to join. Yeah, that's that's the thing about all unions. You don't want to join early because unless you're at the experience level where you're going to get more work in the union, then better to get experience in legal ways that are non-union. Yes. So, yes. So gaming um, and animation does not count. That's not in the guild. So I'm I'm okay. Yeah. A lot of it, most video games are not unionized, which is a problem. No, 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 no. So yeah, I don't. I'm not union on anything. I'm trying. I'm trying to be a good union for me. No one will let me be in their cool group, cool kids group. We're getting a lot of audio dropouts. People are saying, which is we're using Riverside, which is a great uh, program. But again, I just is six and a half now and she's having these emotional outbursts and she just can't Aww. contain herself because she, when she gets sad and then she took a thing of beads that I had gotten her like jewels that you get at Michael's Aww. and they were like this big but also this big upended it because she was upset that a flower she had picked that she wanted to dissect and use as ink like the ancient Egyptians used uh -huh. was no longer in the house. I guess I threw out this wilted flower. How dare and she, How dare I mean, you? tears, tears. And then she takes it and it was like slow motion. You're like, she's sitting on the floor of a playroom and, I'm, and I'm, she's like, takes this thing. I'm like, it's open. And I should have cleaned it up a long time ago. She takes it I'm like, no! And thousands of beads. Now, in that moment, I did what any parent would want to do. I wanted to scream at her. I pick that up. But I've been trying to train myself very, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't yell at her ever, okay. but I, I Dr. Uh, Becky on Instagram is great for trying to deal with overly sensitive and problematic children. And she has great advice. And I was like, okay, all right, I see that you're really upset about this, but that was not okay what you just did. How can we work together to fix this? And I was like super proud of myself because I'm like, Normally, I would have screamed at her to pick all of these things up, and she would have mm -hmm. got, got it. And after we started picking them up, she calmed down, and she turned to me, and she said, I'm sorry I did that. I was That's like, good. oh, wow. That's yeah. Good. I mean, I don't have kids. I just had a dog, which is, I think, at a certain age, training, and then they're too smart to be dog trained. So, like, I think it's still probably good. So, I haven't eaten this <laughs> so maybe I shouldn't say that. Wait, did you get a new, did you get a new dog? No, I'm just saying. Oh, okay. I have oh, you, 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 experience. your experience is dogs. Yeah, I got you. And also, um, but good job. Good job not going. Thank you. you no, know, mommy dearest. Well, I mean, that's our impulse, right? But I mean, and, and obviously it's frustrating and we're going to have to clean all that up. And, but, but I want how her to see me as a, huh? How old is she? Again? She's six and a half. Oh, Wait till she gets I just, 14 and steals your car. That's when I, I know, but <laughs> hopefully if I deal with her in this way, that I'm laying the groundwork for us to be allies and getting her through this. Because obviously, <laughs> I know, I'm trying. Listen, oh, Dr. Sorry. Becky on Instagram. Dr. Troubled, Becky on Instagram. I was a troubled teen. Well, maybe parents, it's because your mom made you pick up gems. Maybe that's no, it. My, kind of like. Just, I was a latchkey kid. I think that's all you really need to know on the love parenting I got. Also, I had really, like, uh, during the time yeah. when self-expression was not looked down as a good thing, uh, let's just say having a goth teenager was probably a nightmare. It yeah, I mean, <laughs> I guess, I mean, it's, it's like a question of, like, boundaries as well. Like, you can't let a kid just do whatever they want because then they're going to push as far as they can to test those boundaries, right? So it's, I, I mean, I try to be pretty liberal with what she could do, but there are certain things I'm like, okay, this is a line you can't cross. Your safety, mm -hmm. you know, destroying things, hurting other people's feelings, those are things. And, you know, I try. I try my best. Who knows 
if what I'm doing I is right, but I just try my best. I would have loved you as my mom. I mean, I know that wouldn't be, but I, I, uh, yeah, your kid is very lucky to have you as a mom because you're a very cool mom. Oh, so you're thank not, you. Thank you very you're much. You're not a cool mom in like the mean girls quote cool mom, like the Amy Poehler giving, by the way, Amy Poehler's character in Mean Girls giving her daughter and her daughter's friends mocktails thing that was real my mom did that mm. my mom did that when we were kids she was really into grasshoppers and mai tais and okay she, she used to make well 70s mom right so, yeah i know i'm not cool with that i mean here's the thing you what i'm not saying you should, you should do that <laughs> yeah no 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 yeah no no no, no. Anyway. Um, oh, I just got a picture of another friend of mine and another... Do you ever get that body where somebody's sending you a picture of somebody you know with them, but you, they, they don't know each other? And it's like, whoa, why yeah. are you guys together? Uh, like when your close friends have a party and don't invite you, and then you find out they're all showing... On Instagram? Instagram? Oh, yeah. And yeah. And it says, hey, I thought you'd be invited to this because you're really close mm. to that person. Yeah. And then all the other people yeah. there. Are like, yeah, I thought so too. Fun. <laughs> it's... <laughs> week that was something that happened a lot yeah i just um i feel like what we need from ai is like an app that tells me how to present myself as the perfect friend and perfect friend responses on group text and on social and no no because Bonnie, I'm not doing this right <laughs> I'm not no doing this right. honestly at a certain point i i had the same fomo especially when people go on trips together and i'm like well nobody's oh, yeah. ever asked me to go on a trip with me like that's am i a but at the same time, you want people to accept you for exactly who you are. And that goes back to parenting, right? Like, I love you. I don't love that you did this, but I love you no matter what. And knowing that you're going to be loved unconditionally, even if you screw up, is it, it means a lot, you know? It makes you less yeah. afraid of messing up and all of that. So, yeah, I don't get invited to that many parties, but the ones I do get invited to, I actually want to go to. And I don't get anxious to go because I might be conditionally approved of there, you know? Yeah. Well, I thought I was pre-approved, but apparently I'm not anymore, so... Okay. Well, um, listen, if I ever had a party, I would invite you, Bonnie. Thanks, and I promise not to do anything bad or disruptive or annoying, which is... No, that's okay. That's okay. No. You could do all of the things above, okay? Um, we are here... So, on this show, I give you 100% of me, whether that's good or bad. Yeah. That's a good segue for our book, but I want to ask you how you're doing. How are you doing right now before we talk about the book? I'm pretty excited, Bonnie. I'm going on one of my bucket list trips. I've always wanted to go to Japan and Greece and probably um, Patagonia. Those are like my three bucket list items. Yeah. And I am going to Greece next week for two and a half weeks. It is like, check. I'm so excited. I have a convention in Dusseldorf. So the couple of weeks before that convention at the end of May, I'm going to be in Greece, going cool. to many islands, seeing so many ruins. And I'm very, very excited about it. Um, so that's something I'm looking forward to. Mm -hmm. I did do a lot of striking today, you know, uh, walking around. And that's kind of, eh, it's problematic because my whole industry is kind of upended. But, you know, we, we deal with it. So that's how I am. Thank you for asking. I, we've, and people survived. I wouldn't say all the shows survived. But I will say that yeah. uh, the last writer strike, which like 100 years ago, was that like yep. during Heroes? It was 15 so years ago. What? 15 it was 15 years ago, Bonnie. Yeah, so Heroes was on TV. Addicted to and I Oh yeah, out. Heroes. I remember that. Yeah, that was a good show. It was a great show. I had friends working on it, so I was just like, okay, mm. this will be this will be great. And then yeah, it I think I think that writer strike went in the writer's favor, but you know, I, it definitely did. If you if it definitely did. If you look at the history of the strikes, some of them were like 22 weeks long. Some of them were just, I think that was 100 days for that last one. Yeah. Um, and yes, they did get concessions that they needed. And from what I hear, the producers really do want to strike because they're able to get rid of uh, deals that they have with people that are costing them money. And it's an excuse to downsize their own company. So it's really a corporate purge that they wanted to set up, <laughs> um, which, you know, not good. They're not good. Not It's not good. So I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Well, I, um, I'm excited for you, but also when you go to Japan, let me make a secret plan. Okay, I've never been. Do you go to Tokyo uh, or Kyoto or? No, I have, I've never been. That's a bucket list item. So like okay. in three or four years, I'm going to go. But I'm doing my first bucket list. Well, 
my second, my other bucket list was Portugal last year. So I do try to do one bucket list trip a year because okay. that's how many credit card, that's how many credit card points that I could use to get my flights. Mm -hmm. So this year is Greece and I'm pretty excited. Okay. I mean, I don't know okay. Greece other than it's like full of history and really good food and there's a lot of sun. But um, if you want to do Tokyo, so I got I got a lot of that I know you will like because it's like, okay, okay, deal. The gamer nerd. So this, uh, I can't, I can't wait. So this book, okay. So we're here for book club until seven thirty, which is very exciting. Uh -huh. And this month was a choice by Bonnie to do a, a cozy horror book. And the book is called how to sell a haunted house by Grady Hendrix. And Bonnie, do you want to read the description or I could do I, it? I, I have, have uh, me I did audio book. Would you mind reading the description? While I put I'll my... do it. I'll do it. Yeah, why don't you give everyone that horrible, horrible view while I do this. So when Louise finds out her parents have died, she dreads going home. She doesn't want to leave her daughter with her ex and fly to Charleston. She doesn't want to deal with her family home, stuffed to the rafters with the remnants of her father's academic career and her mother's lifelong obsession with puppets and dolls. She doesn't want to learn how to live without the two people who knew and loved her best in the world. Most of all, she doesn't want to deal with her brother Mark who never left their hometown, gets fired from one, job after, from one job after another, and resents her success. Unfortunately, she'll need his help to get the house ready for sale because it'll take more than some new paint on the walls and clearing out a lifetime of memories to get this place on the market because some houses don't want to be sold and their home has other plans for them both. Okay, okay so this... That was looking pensive, not pensive, thoughtful. Author's photo. Where they put their I'm so sorry to the podcast listeners who can't see that you're holding a horrific doll up to the camera uh, I, for our live stream. Yes, I collect vintage um, ventriloquist doll puppets, dolls, whatever you want to call them. Uh, think like Goosebumps. Think like the movie Magic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And an old school puppet. And I prefer yeah. to get them um, broken. So as you can tell, the jaw is not quite, it's not quite working right there. And uh, it's worse. It's worse when you do it that. It only has one it's... arm. It doesn't have both arms. Clothes look like he was trying to chip and dales out of it because they're a little askew clothes. He's got a big, a big hole, probably from some sort of fight. I don't, I don't know. And the eyes are. That looks like somebody split it with an axe. The top of that puppet's head. I'm. Where, I, where did you buy that? I have a word. No, it's, it's back there. You can't see it. Uh, and then I have really creepy dolls and stuff. I mean, if you know me, if you go to my Instagram, you'll see most of this stuff. I even have a section called toys slash game puppets if you really want to. Get a visual. Later. Okay. <laughs> so, Bonnie, yes. as an opener, why did you pick this book? Okay. I love great. He is one of those writers that kind of brings out, I call it, I don't want to call it cozy horror. It's more like kitschy horror books mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. it's not just straight up scary it's funny endearing kind of quirky and weird um and uh, i think i'm trying to remember the first book i read from him it was either oh it was horror horror store but it took place in a fake ikea store and he <laughs> spelled horror store like it was a swedish name i think it was like oh eight oh oh See, this is why I don't get hired. Uch, it would be okay. uch. It would be uch. You got a little umlaut over there. Uch. Oh, so it's he. He wrote a great book. I think it's published that I know of was this book that was set in a fake, like a uh, brick and mortar shop, and mm -hmm, uh, it was mm -hmm. haunted. And people that were working stuck there overnight, and it was like a whole thing. And I just and also had illustrations that were like based off IKEA manuals on how to to deal with it and it was just one of the funniest unusual concepts i'd read in a horror book but he's since done uh, my best friend's exorcism which takes place mm -hmm. in the 80s uh, it's a movie on uh, amazon prime right now oh okay cool watch it and then uh final girls support group which is about mm -hmm. you know final girls that survive final girl yep 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 and uh, Southern uh, Southern Book Girl Club's Guide to Club. Slaying Vampires. Yeah. So it's like a book club that is that thinks that their neighbor is a vampire or something. It's, it's really funny. But I chose this book, brand new. Um, I hadn't read it yet. And I, I heard a lot of book buzz from the book, book talkers 
on TikTok, the bookstagram people. Mm-hmm, so I was like, mm-hmm. okay, this, is, this could be a great book for me. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> and I apologize because I didn't read it before I suggested it. That's I, okay. We can do that. I, I can do that. Home, but the thing, because the title is not about a haunted house per se. It's not about selling a haunted house. It's about the weird ass puppets and dogs. So you didn't know that this was about a horrifying book about puppets, murderous puppets, and for me, it made it for me. But I know a lot of people were really wanting like a house flipper type show, or like a I mean selling sunset with vampires or something, which would be that would be it's a great somebody go write that. That's a great show. I'm gonna write it now. I got nothing. No one's hiring me. I'm. He's very um, open on social you can follow his twitter or instagram or tiktok or whatever he's he's very fun like rl stein is social um se henton is fun and like like all my favorite writers stephen king giving elon musk a hard time uh <laughs> it's like so i love authors really interact with their fans because i think that makes you a better author because you know what your fans are liking what they don't like whatever but what yeah I was like, okay, just from the title alone, and I did judge a book by its cover. Uh, uh-huh. I was like, okay, we have to read this. This is gonna be great. This is gonna be funny. This is gonna. Be... I didn't realize. Every yeah. Section is you know. Grief. Yeah. Realistic. It would be about just. Uh, yeah. Why don't Why don't I read a little passage here? Uh, here's a little sample of the kind of book. Now, mind okay. you, I've never read a horror bu- book. I don't read horror I stories. Read I don't watch horror. horror. Haven't I? Never. Well, Never. well, Cthulhu erotica it, that could count. That was more romance. I could get through Cthulhu, okay. uh, you know, romance novels, but this one, uh, Mark had his right arm held high, and something on the end of it seemed to squirm and dance. The rest of his body stood still. The writhing upright arm moved, scanned the hall, looking for something, and then Mark stepped out of the shadows into the weak daylight coming from the dining room. His face hung slack, and on his right hand, he wore Pupkin. Pupkin waved at her. He leered and capered, as animated and vibrant as Mark was motionless and dead. Cock away, wee! <laughs> Pupkin screeched in his high-pitched voice. It came out of Mark's throat, but it was Pupkin. No. Puppy began to sing, dancing from side to side. Pupkin here! Pupkin here! What do you do? Pupkin here! And then he, pro- he proceeds to try to murder her. And, spoiler alert, she has to cut his hand off with a circular saw. Uh-uh, not just as his nubbins. Don't they call it nubbins? I don't know, Bonnie, but I'm sitting here reading this. I'm like, what is happening? Okay, there are the- murderous puppets everywhere. There's a yeah. murderous imaginary dog. There's yeah. blood. I don't understand how these characters are alive because they're so assaulted throughout the book. And I'm like, there's not even a lot of real estate action. I know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's a- it's when you actually do buy a haunted house, it's bait and switch, right? They tell you, yeah. it's a- and then you're stuck there with a poltergeist. By the way, I just watched the pol- that happened. I shouldn't say that just happened. I think it came out like what 2000. It was a couple years ago, right? Yeah, 2012 or something. And it, yeah, it was a while ago. It's really good, but um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I was like, yeah, that's how would you all these TV shows about it? I think I told you my long and sordid, sad story that I pitched. 15 years ago and they're like no one watches that stuff and i pitched it again yeah. and they're in 10 years later they're like nah. and now it's like there's five different house flipper shows about haunted. listen you're talking to a woman who's always ahead of your time and never never you're way ahead i mean you predated youtube you made youtube youtube happen uh, okay. don't tell anybody that i'll be too old i did I actually this this is a true story one of my last things i did in hollywood for writing was pitching a TV show that I wrote with a friend of mine. And it was really good. And we had a showrunner attached. And she had a deal in a studio. And their manager, a man, um, when we were going in to pitch, uh, uh, and I was like, yeah, you know, I was mentioning the Guild is in the Smithsonian. And then my friend mentioned she had a kid. And he's like, you guys, don't talk about that. The Smithsonian m- makes you sound old. And you being a mother is not sexy. Let's go. Oh, my God. Oh my god you it know, really happened i i just watched the uh forever judy bloom documentary that i think is also on amazon prime uh this is 
Uh, Judy Bloom documentary was great because, you know, she was at a time was writing why it wasn't even a term yet really that was mm -hmm. nonsense. but she was writing about you know menstruation and masturbation and eating and divorces and all these things most public schools and schools didn't mm -hmm. want preteens to read and mm -hmm. uh just hearing she kept getting was like yeah oh nothing's changed like the things she was getting in the 70s at the height of feminism uh we're still getting and now on top of it, for me, it's ageism. So I don't even get to say I have experience as a parent. I should write this book. It's no, just, I'm old. I'm no, for old. sure. As a woman, if you are not in the um, effable age range, yeah. you might as well be dead, especially, yeah. I mean, especially in Hollywood, but I think anywhere. The ageism, ageism impacts men and women, especially, I think, in most um, careers. But for particular in Hollywood, women get the brunt of it because for some reason, men get more power as they're older and look yeah. you know, more attractive and more authority. And women are just like, you, there's no there's no space for women well, in their 40s well, and above for anything but being a supporting player in, in either on the screen or in behind the scenes, quite frankly. So right. it's it's sad. <laughs> and if you make a big deal out of it, you're considered even more problematic. So like, I feel this is a safe space to talk about it, even though it's on Twitch and a lot of people are watching it and someone could probably send it to another person and say Bonnie sucks. But I think, <laughs> especially when I'm doing work that's not in front of the camera, I'm literally just a writer. Um, and many writers can live or, or can write all the way till they're dead. But yeah. for some reason, if I want to do TV or movies or games, you have to be in that 30 something sweet spot or they will consider you ancient unless you're a CEO or a VP. Yeah. Like you'd have to be running the company or straight out of college. There's not a lot of, there's not. I mean, I, I know, especially in pop culture where right. it's also a question of like, if most of the people who are working there are a certain age range, they don't want to work with somebody older. And I think that's, you know, you could look at, I mean, I, I actually see this when I'm reading things to my daughter, stepmothers are always enemy. Mothers are always enemy. And the parents have to die in order the child for the child to ascend and actualize themselves. Yeah. And especially older women are never allies to younger women in any of these stories. They have to be either evil or eliminated in order for the per So when you indoctrinate children from a young age to think about this age difference as someone who's in their way, then of course you're going to have a bunch of 25 year olds not wanting to work with somebody who has a lot more experience because they're not going to want to have that dynamic in their workplace, right? I mean, and if they're in... like a legend, right? Like Sharon or Michelle Yao or Shannon Tweed. Let's put in some porn in there. Soccer porn. It's there's this, but those are actors, and I feel like actresses have a different kind of shelf life, and sometimes a worse shelf life, obviously, than writers. And I know you just you both as both, but I've never been really in front of the camera other than dumb shit I do on. I'm sorry. I am a content creator. I think that's what we're supposed to say now. <laughs> yeah, you're a content creator. You, you create content. That, but that's not, it's not like I'm in a Ryan Murphy show and I'm the equivalent of, you know, all the wonderful older, I'm not Sharon Stone in, in one of the American, yeah, yeah, yeah. American horror. I wish. <clears throat> me, but I know she's older. Yeah. No, she looks great. Um, okay, we should get back to the we should get back to the book. We should get back to the book. Back oh, to the book. So this book also is gonna be a TV show though. It just got optioned. Oh really? It of seems more like a movie. It seems like a movie. It doesn't feel substantial enough to be a TV show. I don't know, maybe it's a movie. I mean all bets are off now, but who knows? Okay. okay, so I didn't like any of the horror. I don't like just just from principle. It's not enjoyable for me to be A scared, B look at like like I'm I'm not entertained by horror. But I did what I did love about this um, book is I love the family. Yeah. They were these really kooky people. It felt like almost like um, you know, like a uh, what, what what is that? Steel Magnolias. <laughs> Talk <laughs> kind about of with, another reference. I yeah. know most people won't know that, I but know. it was like very kitschy, very uh, yeah. cutesy characters with the yeah. aunts and the grandmas and all that stuff. And they're all like, "Oh my, oh my, oh my lord! You got a demon, girl! We got to get this demon out of here!" And I was really. I did actually Southern. love that part of it. Yeah. Southern and I, homes, though, that's... Exactly. And I'm from the South, so I really like that dynamic. It felt yeah. really authentic to me. And then I really loved the writing that was, you know, this this kind of toxic brother-sister relationship where they, through this horrible experience where she cuts his arm off, spoiler alert, um, <laughs> and other horrible things happen, 
that they're able to have a functional relationship after going through this together and kind of understanding themselves and each other and what happened to them in the past. It was just really beautifully written. Um, so I really appreciated that about it. Uh, this is not the first horror book you've read. I made you read Clown in the Cornfield, like, a few months Oh, yeah, okay. Clown in the Cornfield wasn't as, as, I don't, that was more like, you know what it is? At least, that was more like people who didn't yeah. like that. You know, it was less bloody than this as well. Also, the kids fought back, and, you know, they, they fight back in this, but I don't enjoy the sequences where people are just being attacked. Like, she gets attacked by taxidermy squirrels. What's and that? that's just horror. What's it was amazing. But I mean, I, do, I, do you have any taxidermy squirrels? Oh my god, I have like fifteen. I'm trying to figure out what the best one. Here, I'll get get your favorite down here. Uh, get no, your favorite while I look for another. Um, let me see if I can find. For the podcast, I got the listeners only because this is I have like I have like a squirrel that's playing the violin. I've got a yeah, squirrel that's I'm like sure. at a Ouija board. This one I'm gonna I try to find another quote here. This is slow clap, slow cat clap squirrel. Can you see him? I yeah. will describe them to the listeners. It is a squirrel. The beginning project, like a project for a beginner taxidermy person because the eyes are not, it is not. Oh, that's a, a wonky squirrel. That poor little squirrel got stuffed by an amateur. Eyes are not symmetrical. Hands are either doing like the evil burns hand gesture or slow, I like to think it's slow clap. Other, it's like a Monet, right? Like from Clueless. Far away, uh -huh. up close, not so much. Far away, Monet, Here, up close, Picasso. <laughs> here is a, here's a couple of, uh, let me give you a couple of quotes here. All it right. went in fast, like there was nothing there, like it was cutting air, and everything around her misted red, and Louise's face went hot. Then it hit bone, his radius, her girl's grout brain said, and the intolerable screeching of the saw went up an octave to an ear-shredding yowl, like the drill at a dentist office. Louise looked at Pupkin and he was still writhing and she told herself that it was just a reflex action of Mark's severed arm inside him. But he was crawling deliberately toward the hammer, dragging Mark's ragged red stump behind him as it hung from his puppet hole. Ah. I don't ever want to hear the words puppet and hole together, okay? Hung from a puppet hole feels like that's an erotica genre. We have not really ventured length, literally. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, this is the squirrel. I have many. I have, uh, like I said earlier, one playing violin, one playing board games. There's one. It's like that. Um, what was that movie? The Dinner with Morons or whatever. With, I haven't seen uh, it. Oh, was Steve... Dinner with Andre? <laughs> no, with uh, Steve, uh, funny guy from The Office. Oh my god, I'm turning into my dad. I can't remember. Steve Carell. Steve Carell in a movie. Uh, I think it's called Dinner. With morons or more, it's rich people basically challenging each other to find the dumbest person on earth guest uh, to their big party. The main character Puppet hole. Stephen Carell, and Stephen Carell's job is that he makes miniatures of taxidermy mice doing fun things. Oh, I saw the trailer for that, and I was like, no, I never want to watch that. What was the I, name of the movie, chat? I, because of the tax. And Jennifer Martin, Schmucks. I would, I mean, I don't know. That's a fine line between, like, taxidermy without people thinking psycho, like, literally. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also, last time I sounded like a serial killer, so I'm like, eh, uh, maybe not. Maybe, uh, maybe not. Uh, anyway, I liked this book, not necessarily for stuff, which I always will love. But for the mm -hmm. family dynamics, and also who has had kind of a, I mean, you have a brother. I have a brother. We're very I have a brother. In, yeah. We're very close in age. You and your brother are very close in age. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Have, like, very similar interests. My brother and I could not, like, he is a broker for uh, Edward Jones. He's like a money's guy. He's the one in charge of my retirement, so I don't end up in a tent <laughs> somewhere. Oh, that's a nice that's good yeah that's he good he was also like the brother that was like did kind of get away with everything he was the second child he was an, mm. an athlete he was very he, he could pick up a sport and master it in a week i was the direct opposite um we the greatest you know kinship when we lived under the same roof yeah older though 
Uh, we have learned to appreciate, appreciate each other more. He has kids. I'm the cool, quirky aunt. Like, we definitely are better together now than we were as teenagers. So when I was reading, I can relate 100%. <laughs> I am never, uh, my brother has both his arms, though. I should probably say that. Well, I mean, you're not going to, you're not going to use a circular saw and cut his arm off. Actually, are you no, a good no, sibling? Circular saws are kind of a maneuver. Uh, yeah, I don't know. She seemed to do it like butter. I, I read the I read the passage. It was pretty easy for her. They're not the precision weapon you hope they they are. I almost did hit my brother with a nail gun, and what? Him. I picked up a nail gun in the garage. We're cleaning the garage because that was our punishment. Every once in a while, we had to do we had to do put the orange sawdust. You know what they used to put on puke in elementary school that that really well not puke the sawdust so we would uh I, that's not really important to know but okay uh yeah sometimes i would turn on and not realize i was turning them on and like pretend i was like doing a charlie's angels thing not realizing no no was, you don't do that with a nail gun bonnie oh boy and nail guns don't okay. have to be cords they can have batteries so i i was like oh, it's not plugged in it's fine and i think i shot okay. towards him and it missed him thank god but i was like oh shit and then um we did not talk about it. We also prank each other a lot. So you didn't talk about it. <laughs> no. How would you not talk about a nail almost impaling you? That could kill you, man. In front of the parents. In front of the parents. In front of our absentee parents because we're latchkey kids. Here's the thing: if you don't know what a latchkey okay. kid is, I mean, that is like talk. I want to write a book, kid, brother and sister in a haunted house. I think that would be better than yeah. Netflix. But what I got from this book was still very gratifying for me because of the puppets and toys and a uh, weird, weird relationship stuff, but also very realistic relationship stuff that, yeah. you know, you could take all the scary stuff out and it would be a pretty good relationship book. So. Well, Riga D from the chat said that it made the book made her cry, the better social relationship. And the fact that she was protecting her kid, her five-year-old through generation from the generational trauma through pumpkin is very impressive. Now, that really did bother me. So, spoiler alert again, her five-year-old daughter gets possessed by Pupkin. And it was very hard to read all of that because, yeah. you know, my kid is almost that age. Oh. And having her, like, described as listless and, you know, screaming and being taken over by this evil puppet. And I'm not going to spoil the end, but they do end up getting rid of Pupkin in a, in a, in a very interesting way. And the generational trauma com comment is very cool. That yeah, that's very accurate. That's how the book kind of resolves itself, where they overcome this sort of trauma that goes from generation to generation. I, I really like that, but it was very hard for me to read that. Oh, of course, because it it was not fun. Yeah, and also I agree. Like, I mean, I think as parents or as aunties and uncles, it's kind of up to us to not perpetuate bad behavior that we had put upon us as children by our parents, by our relatives. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I've always been, even though no one in my family has taken me up on this offer, I've always been like, hey, if you feel like you don't belong, if you feel like no one gets you, if you feel like you're kind of an outsider and you want to talk to someone, I am available 24 seven. You can talk to me anytime you want. But all of my nephews and nieces are like direct replicas of my brother. So they're very like uh, comfortable in their own skin and really popular and great at everything. And <laughs> So like, Bonnie, what happened to you? It feels like you're adopted or something. Oh, oh, trust me. I had hoped for the year adopted. What I got instead was, oh, you have a half-sister you didn't know about speech? Which is a whole other... What? Yeah. An older half-sister I didn't know about until I was in college. And that didn't turn out great either. So I'm like, I've been waiting for the um, AI made you, I don't know, dropped you off like any of those would be mm -hmm. plausible plausible definitions and i am the way i am but i do think in this book it really does show how to be a better parent and how to be there for your kid also just know that trauma takes different forms for everybody and mm -hmm. i thought it was very interesting that the book is in sections of grief right so there's anger i did i did notice I, I literally didn't catch on until i saw the last the second to last i was like oh that's it i see it's a clever way to write it they used a structure of you know adapting yeah. or the seven stages of, of grieving i i really like that i thought it was really clever 
Yeah, and also just a side note, that doesn't have to be in order. Everyone deals, and you can go back and forth. Like I've had grief moments where I was in denial, and then I was angry, and then went back to de- then skipped over to acceptance, and then went back mm-hmm. to denial. I'm like the same thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad the, the, I'm glad the book was broken up that way. I thought it was interesting. I have a question. No, for it you was now. really. Go yeah. Ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say that Riga D, who actually did her research, uh, oh. or their research for um, this, uh, read up on the author, Gary Hendricks explained in his presentation of that book that every house, house is a haunted house, mm-hmm. but not haunted by ghosts, but by memories, mm-hmm. which is a beautiful way to put this. It is. Yeah. And I was actually thinking that. I was like, when I'm driving around Los Angeles, I've been here for a long time. And every time I drive down a street, I have a memory associated with that street, like an audition or a meeting or a dinner with a friend. And I have my own Los Angeles. I, you know, if I were a ghost, I would haunt a totally different Los Angeles from every single other person on the planet. We all have these memory patterns that are tied to locations that I think is really interesting that we all have different memories. And the fact that we all have a childhood home are, are, and I love the themes of the book where, her experience in that childhood home was not what her brother experienced, even though they were in the same home together. So I yeah. really, I love that part of it. It's a really good book. Yeah. And I, you know, I agree with you on that. I think one of the reasons I moved to LA is I was in San Francisco for what, 23 years or something. And I have my twenties and my thirties and half of my forties there. So I have mm-hmm. decades worth of memories. Uh, it's not like New York though, where I keep running into the same, but like stuff, it was like I go to different places but also had place that would pile on because I'd have new memories of the place because I'd been there so long and with LA it was weird for me because I moved here in 2018 so I didn't have enough and then we got quarantined oh, I know it was the worst time possible to move uh, wasn't it I feel like the idea is very uh, good at saying that um sorry you're good and so it can be a house, it can be a place, it can even be a person that's haunted for you because you had to um, let go of that person the way they used to be, you know what I mean? Or mm-hmm. how, I, you know, talk to one of my exes and we're getting along really well. And then part of me in my brain is like, oh, maybe we should start this up. No, <laughs> I was in love with a person that doesn't exist anymore and they were in love with me at that time and I have changed so much. It's like two strangers again dating. So it wouldn't necessarily be the best. I don't know. I know a lot of people who like, I'm getting married to my first boyfriend. We got back together after 15, you know, like they circle back. (laughs) Maybe I should have had some (laughs) normal people. Um, I will say during quarantine, I did get back together sort of with a couple of persons. So it wasn't quite as, you know, dynamic. Bonnie. Okay, so I have a question for you. How did okay. Lynn, what uh, pumpkin look like? What, what did you think he looked like? I well, I think it was cloth. He was like cloth and he had a terrifying like white face and like this weird like, I, I figured he seemed a little rudimentary in a creepy way, but it the one thing that really stuck in my mind, and I don't, I don't remember actually, I probably didn't read it carefully enough, that okay. he had this weird tube, kind of like a toupee on the top that didn't, yes. It was like his hair didn't really fit with his body. Mm-hmm. And his eye, eyes had like maybe red around but I don't know. That's how I pictured him. I don't yeah, remember. I, I, um, I saw a picture that Grady Hendrix shared. I think if you were in oh. a book club, he drew an illustration of how he envisioned it. And it looks like ghosty from like the 40s. Like a little. Oh. Like a little cream kind of look. Uh, oh, I see it now. Okay. Ugh. How, okay. How, uh, this is how I envision pumpkin. That, I'm going to link it in the chat for the people who are uh, listening as a podcast. There, If you just type uh, Grady Hendrix pumpkin picture, you will get it. I, I have a Fangoria article here. Yeah. Um, He's terrifying. Way worse than I thought. I was thinking elf on a shelf. Kind of bad hair. He's always winky winky. You know, so I think I, Elf on a Shelf is the creepiest thing in the world. Yeah, like, I for thought, real. This is original. Oh, this is the one with the cameras from the 40s or something. So, um, That's a devil. Is that supposed to be Elf on a Shelf as a devil? Oh, sorry. Devil on a Shelf. Yeah, I probably should. 
Yeah, I don't have that. What's a devil on a shelf? It's the same thing. You know, he's holding up his knees like the thing there. But when do you get the devil on a shelf out? Is that a Halloween thing oh, or just a year round thing? It's on, it's in my red section of my bookcase. That's not red is in that book. Um, this but is also, the creepiest thing I've ever seen, Bonnie. What is what in the world? I know. I mean, also, uh, well, it's, and it's also dusty. I that is. It's probably faded from being in the sun. Anyway. What the hell, uh, man? Also, I kind of early on really creepy looking sock puppet. Yeah, that's kind of what I I, I picked. I didn't really think of him as having like solid legs and, and arms, how the picture that I'm looking at right now. Yeah. Um, is I kind of I, I pictured him as just a like a felt thing that looks more like a sock puppet. Yeah, like I think and as, as someone I would say is an expert in collecting creepy puppets and dolls, uh, I would say handmade it looks the creepier it is. Yes, hundred um, percent. I also in fact the craft book I've written I've made a puppet. I made Admiral Sackbar Star Wars mm-hmm. craft book. That was to be Admiral Akbar, but Sackbar because the pun. I know. That's pretty great. That's um, great. <laughs> but like, here, I'll get them out just as a visual for those that are watching. But like, when I do like bag puppets and really happy, mm-hmm. Sackbar, look how happy he is. He's just like, little bag. Yeah. He looks like he's at a rave. He does not He's look adorable. Like, yeah, he's not going to kill you in his, in your sleep. But I would this, not circular saw your arm off if you had that on your arm. I would circular saw your one, arm off if you had one, that thing. This one, this ventrilo- vintage ventriloquist puppet that I've got is both arms. So it's a saw incident. I don't know. I don't know, but. So all right. By the way, who all in all. Character? Who was your... wasn't, that wasn't a main character. I mean, Aunt Honey. I really uh-huh. loved her. And Aunt Gail, Aunt Gail, I really liked, um, I love those Southern women, you know, I, I know them. They are very authentically written. I don't know if he's from the South or he just did a lot of research that I've watched Designing Women. <laughs> but um, I really enjoyed those. I mean, Aunt, Aunt, I, I like these genteel Southern women who are super uh, religious but think they can cast say, the devil out of a tall. You know what I'm saying? They're right. like, oh, we deal with that all the time, honey. I know, they're so I really like that. They're so nonchalant yeah. about evil. They're like, oh, yeah, we can deal with that. Like, that's, I love that Southern type of character. I mean, I loved Anne Rice's books, and those were all full of, I mean, vampires, obviously, but the Mayfair, which, you know, Southern entrance to it. And even yeah. like, when you looked at, look at um, the Teenage Witch, awesome. So, I don't know. I know, I, they were great. Yeah, so I love that. I personally, I loved Barb. Uh, the. Oh, Barb was great too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't really need Poppy and Ian. Is that the, I kind of thought of them as filler kind of characters? So. I mean, when 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 Poppy started regressing, I really felt felt that in my heart. And Ian yeah. was okay. He was like an okay ex. He wasn't unreasonable or like. I like the way he wasn't painted as a total bad guy. You know, it's like, right. oh, ex people are always a holes. Well, Ian didn't seem that bad. It just was like not worked out. It didn't work out between them. But he was a pretty good parent. And it felt like he was realistically calling things out that needed to be called out yeah. on Louise's part. So, uh, yeah, I liked it. Also, a great part of the book, the Waffle House scene. I don't Oh, know. the Waffle House scene was the best part where they went and got waffles. And I love Waffle House so much. And the fact they didn't order waffles enraged me. Although their hash browns are very good. They're very good. But also, uh, for any of you who have never been to Waffle House, if there is a Waffle House in your area, just know it. I like to say it's like House of Pies or Perkins or, you know, Cracker Barrel. That's like a Wes Anderson movie. Waffle House is a Tarantino movie <laughs> with, some yep. David, with some David Lynch thrown in. Or it's, Coen Brothers or Coen Brothers. Anyone, yeah. Or, you know, any fighting movie. Anyone there's a lot of fighting because let me yep. tell you, I, I think Tarantino could do a whole movie inside Waffle House. He yep. right on par with his usual Tarantino stuff. Like Kill Bill 3, just make it all Waffle it's a, yeah. they're always small though, so they have to be a really compact fight. Because uh, it's a, they're usually small, Waffle Houses are pretty small. But in, in lieu of like, uh, not in lieu, with TikTok being, I'm using it, if you mm-hmm. Waffle House on TikTok or YouTube, I come up with some great video. The waiters and the, the, the cooks there know how to protect themselves, and they have to protect themselves. Easy ass customer. 
I think, I don't know, is it a 24 hour establishment? Like yeah, they, a lot of them are usually 24 hours. So yeah. you're going to get like the 4 a.m. weirdos going in. Part of the valley. I live in no the worst part of NoHo and there's a Denny's one block away from me. And that Denny's is calmer. Full house. <laughs> and SNL, Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live. I think it was like a few lives ago. Uh, they did a great Waffle House skit. That was perfect. That was. Oh, perfect. I'll have to look it up. It well, was, it's going to be rerun because there's no more SNL for, until the strike is over. Oh, that's so, there cool. you go. Yeah. It reruns in. But I will say All right. that was good for this. So I, well, how many points, like, how many stars out of five? I would give it four stars. Uh, you know, I really liked it. I would recommend it. And I don't read horror. And I probably wouldn't read another book by this author just because I don't enjoy write, reading horror. But if I was going to read another horror, I really liked it because it was funny. It was heartfelt. It was really good writing. And, you know, despite the puppets, I was really, I, I really enjoyed it. So thank you for that. So yeah. our next book, oh, our I, next book is called. Can I, I wanna um, read it. Can I read the book? <laughs> what? Can I read the book? I, oh, you want to read the book. I'm sorry. I, I totally interrupted you. Yes, go ahead. It's not a yes. shocker. I would say a 4.5, four and a half stars. Okay. Because it was oh, a little good. too uh, realistic and cryy for me. And I like my horror books to be way off base so I can not think of the real world ever. When okay. I'm reading, so, yeah. Okay. So what are we reading next? What, uh, what do we got? Okay. So we're going to read a game lit book that I mentioned last time. We're going to be reading. I'm trying to get the description up. No, this is number two. Come on, man. Here it is. Uh, it's called Beware of Chicken. What? And it is by a uh, casual farmer. One word, okay? It's a game lit book, and I'm really excited to reread it because it's, I just love this book so much. Wait. I'm going to read you a wait, description. Wait, 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 wait. Game lit. Was that just literature based on a game? It's kind of like, uh, remember we met, read, read Judge and Crawler Carl? It's, it's similar, but this is a different kind. It's kind of in a um, martial arts anime world. It is a laugh out loud, slice of life, martial arts fantasy about farming. Okay? So that's, I just, I don't know, I don't want to spoil anymore. I promise you, it is like the cutest, funniest book. And I'm very excited to read it um, for next month. I'm going to be traveling, so we're going to have to figure out a book club um, date. Okay. Um, a little bit later, just check my Discord for the updates, and everything will always end up on the podcast feed. So, thank you very much. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go dark and then come back up to play Fortnite with Jeff and Sean and Robin. Or no, yeah, Jeff and Sean and Robin in a minute. So, Robin Thorson. Robin Thorson. Will you tell I'm her pretty excited. Me? Tell her hi for me. I will. I like high level stalk her on Instagram because she posts so many great like food pictures, and I'm just like, oh my She's god, great. Chef, you're amazing. And also, I have Sean was hilarious in the last video that you guys did. I know. He's so funny. Well. The group is hilarious, but Sean really brought it. He really brought it. Yeah. Well, we'll see you in about five minutes, you guys. Okay? All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.